coming uh, NTSB Chair Jennifer Homendy, H-O-M-E-N-D-Y, is going to provide an update on the NTSB's investigation into the accident on I-70 yesterday in Aetna, and then she'll take some questions. Also with her will be the investigator in charge, Kenny, K-E-N-N-Y, Bragg, B-R-A-G-G. Peter forgets that I, he's much taller than I am. All right, uh, as uh, Peter mentioned, my name is Jennifer Homendy and I'm chair of the National Transportation Safety Board. And with me today is our investigator in charge, Kenny Bragg. Also with me today is Colonel Charles Jones, superintendent of the state highway patrol. Colonel Jones is gonna make a statement after I speak and then I'll come back up and we'll start questions. So the National Transportation Safety Board is an independent federal agency charged by Congress with investigating every civil aviation accident in the United States, some abroad, and then uh, we, we uh, sorry, investigate significant events in all other modes of transportation. Our goal at the end of any investigation is to issue safety recommendations that if implemented would prevent that tragedy from reoccurring. I do wanna start, uh, before I, I get into what we've been doing, I do wanna stop and uh, say a few words to the families who lost loved ones in this horrible tragedy and survivors um, I can't imagine what you've gone through since this crash and what challenges lie ahead for you. But just know that the NTSB will be thinking of you and working diligently on this investigation and even after the investigation to implement our recommendations to prevent it from reoccurring. Uh, so we'll be thinking of you in the days, weeks, months ahead, uh, and uh, our, our, hearts, our, uh, our hearts go out to you. So today was the first day where we began our work. We arrived pretty late last night around 10 p.m. We still had investigators from around the country arriving this morning. Uh, our morning started with an incredibly detailed uh, which I, I want to thank the uh, State Highway Patrol briefing with uh, the State Highway Patrol and with the Director of the Department of Public Safety. Then we had our organizational meeting uh, where we begin uh, to just go through uh, some of the questions we may have and some things we want to do throughout the day. Uh, and then the, the investigators began their work throughout the day. So. Um, I'll get into some of the things we, we did uh, throughout the afternoon as I continue. Uh, but I do want to focus for a second on NTSB's personnel. Uh, we're here with 16 personnel. Nine are investigators for the NTSB. Uh, two are with our Family Assistance Program. Our Family Assistance Program, uh, the professionals within that uh, work with the families, uh, who lost loved ones and they work with uh, the survivors after tragedies to help them get them the resources they need and walk them through our process and really they're with them throughout the entire investigative process. So just talking about our investigators, I really wanna talk about their expertise and what they're gonna be looking for. Because we do, you know, when I say this investigation will take 12 to 18 months, and I will get, I will explain that, because we take action before that. Y you need to understand how uh, in depth our investigation is, and it is in depth. Uh, we have an expert in highway factors here, and what that means is the investigator will be focused on the environment in which this crash occurred. Uh, they will look at roadway conditions, roadway design, 
to look at weather, uh, traffic volumes, and uh, they'll look at the accident histories in this area. Uh, they'll also look at how traffic was queuing that morning with the previous uh, crash that occurred. And uh, today we did go on scene to get a visual. Um, we'll ha we have an investigator focused on human performance. That, uh, that investigator will focus on the performance of the human operators. They'll look at fatigue, they'll look at distraction, medical conditions, medical histories, uh, any medication being taken. They'll look at alcohol and drug testing. Uh, they'll look at their training that they've received in the past, the workload, uh, equipment design, and the, the environment in which they work. We have investigators for motor carrier factors. Those investigators will focus on operations of the driver and the motor carrier, uh, any driver and the motor carrier, the motor carrier's compliance with uh, state or federal regulations. That includes hours of service regulations, that's uh, work and rest time, and licensing requirements, including the commercial driver's license. We'll look at medical certification. Uh, if you have any sort of medical issues, you might have to get medical certification from FMCSA. That's the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration. We'll look at oversight of the companies and the overall safety culture of the company, including fatigue management or their vehicle maintenance practices. And we have investigators focused on survival factors. These investigators examine injuries to the occupants as it relates to the dynamics of the crash. So they'll look at seat belts. Were there seat belts? Um, they'll, or any damage to seat belts. They will look at crash worthiness of the vehicles, emergency egress, uh, whether there were emergency briefings. They will also interview first responders and develop a timeline including communications uh, of the different agencies that responded. We also have investigators focused on vehicle factors. These investigators are focused on the mechanical condition of the vehicles and past inspections of the vehicles. Now we did uh, begin an, an initial look today at all the vehicles. We have investigators focused on crash reconstruction and they map and document the crash scene and the vehicles involved. They analyze the physical evidence, include roadway markings. Uh, they will review the drone footage, the excellent drone footage and pictures that the state highway patrol took and uh, they will uh, begin to reconstruct the crash sequence. In addition to that, we have, like I mentioned, we have our family assistance team. Now our family assistance team today began reaching out to the families. Uh, they also uh, reached out to the school. And uh, as I mentioned, they will support the families and the survivors throughout this process. Uh, I do wanna mention there was significant help from the Ohio State Highway Patrol with respect to the families and the survivors as well, and we so appreciate that support. Now, I, I wanna talk a little bit about how our investigative process works, and this is for every investigation that we conduct. We call it the party process. So we invite entities in that we believe are experts that can provide factual information about this crash and we begin to gather facts with them. Uh, it helps in making sure we have the right facts and uh, also provides the entities with any safety deficiencies uh, that may need to be addressed well before our investigation is completed or a final report is out. They are not part of NTSB's analysis that is us alone, that is, uh, we're an independent agency, so that's something that we will conduct later on in the investigation. Now, uh, uh, the parties to our investigation is the Ohio State Highway Patrol, the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, 
And I, I do want to recognize, I spoke with uh, FMCSA's administrator, Robin Hutchison, a few times over the last few days and really appreciate her support. Um, also party to the investigation is Daimler Trucks North America and the Ohio Department of Transportation. We could always add more parties as this goes along in the ne next few days or even months, and uh, uh, so we don't have others right now, but could always add them. So just to give you an idea of what we're going to be doing over the next few days, our, investigation, uh, our investigators will document the crash site, the vehicles, and they'll begin to gather all the factual information. Factual information like uh, inspection history of the vehicles, uh, as I mentioned, driver's hours of service. Um, and then um, uh, in about two weeks, uh, we will issue, two to three weeks, we'll issue a preliminary report. That preliminary report contains factual information. It does not contain the analysis portion of the investigation. Uh, but, uh, as I said, this investigation may take us between 12 and 18 months, but at any time in that, in that period, uh, we could issue urgent safety recommendations. If we see something, we do not hesitate to issue urgent safety recommendations to address any sort of safety deficiency. Now again, I just want to remind folks that our, our focus is on safety. Uh, our whole mission is based on determining how this happened, uh, why this happened, and to prevent it from reoccurring. Now, uh, just along those lines, we have investigated a number of crashes over the years involving mo motor coaches uh, with kids on board. Uh, we've issued several safety recommendations, so certainly we're always looking to see if there are any similarities with previous uh, crashes. We don't know that yet. It's too early to tell. Uh, but it's, it's incredibly heartbreaking, and our whole goal is to prevent that. So uh, before I turn this over to the Colonel, I want to uh, just mention a, several thank yous. Uh, I think you will find here uh, tremendous outpouring of support as a result of this, cooperation and teamwork, uh, which is uh, incredible at times like this. So first I want to thank Governor DeWine, who I met with this afternoon. I want to thank the governor's office. Uh, I want to thank Senator Brown, who I also spoke with today. Uh, I hope to connect with Senator Vance. We have uh, missed each other. Uh, I did speak with Congressman Bill Johnson, uh, so I want to thank him. He asked, was there anything he could do? So uh, in constant contact with him as well. Of course, I said the Ohio State Highway Patrol I cannot underestimate, or I, I'm underestimating when I say their motto is service with a purpose. It's an understatement for you because it's incredible what the State Highway Patrol has done throughout this. I mean, everything from their expertise on crash site, taking us to look to the ve at the vehicles their expertise working with family members and survivors, expertise in public affairs, just the partnership, it, it, uh, it, I am, uh, it is an understatement. It is clear that you take to heart service with a purpose. Thank you. Um, I also want to thank the Department of Public Safety's director, Andy Wilson, the Ohio Department of Transportation, the Public Utility Commission, I mentioned the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, and I have uh, a host of first responder agencies that I would like to also mention. When I read this list, it is an extensive list that we owe a great bit of gratitude to these first responders, uh, but incredible service. And you'll see this as I go through this long list of everyone who, who was part of this incredible response. Walnut Township Fire Department, Violet Township Fire Department, Basel Joint Fire District, 
Columbus Fire Department, Whitehall Fire Department, Jefferson Township Fire Department, Madison Township Fire Department, Franklin County, Truro Township Fire Department, MedFlight, Gahanna Police Department, and I want to mention something on the Gahanna Police Department. They were actually the first on scene uh, because they were en route, they were there en route uh, to a training and, and heard it uh, from, dis from a dispatcher and stopped. So a big thank you there. Uh, also thank you to St. Albans Township Fire Department, Heath Fire Department, Hartford Township Fire Department, Granville Township Fire Department, West Licking Joint Fire District, Buckeye Lake Village Fire Department, Licking Township Fire Company, Air Evac Life Team, Licking County Emergency Management, Licking County Hazmat Team, Thorn Township Fire Department, Licking County Sheriff's Office, Tuscarora's Sheriff's, Sheriff, Sheriff's Office, uh, Patascala Police, uh, the Licking County Coroner's Office, Tuskegee Valley School Administration, the American Red Cross, and a host of other first responders, including Good Samaritans on the scene, who chipped in at some of the worst times to help other uh, people. Uh, and, and I also want to finally uh, thank the towing company as well. So with that, I'm going to turn things over uh, to the Colonel and then come back and we'll begin the round of questions. Thank you, Madam Chair. Yesterday was a day of true sadness that will live in the hearts of many Ohioans forever. On behalf of the Ohio State Highway Patrol, we offer our condolences to the Tuscaroras Valley local school community. I want to thank all the first responders who worked together and acted with such compassion to rally around the Tuscarora school family. I also want to thank Madam Chair Jennifer Homendy and all of the staff with the National Transportation Safety Board for their presence in the wake of this tra tragedy. Madam Chair, the patrol will provide any and all resources to collaborate with your staff to ensure the investigation is thorough. Thank you. I'll turn it back over to Madam Chair Hamadi. Thank you, Colonel. So uh, we'll start with questions. Uh, if you can raise your hand and uh, state your name and affiliation. First there, and then here. How long that time will be on the ground here in Ohio? Uh, probably into early next week. Early, early next, next week. week uh, then the investigation shifts to Washington, but there may be visits to uh, company facilities uh, or to get certain documentation. Uh, so that continues. On. I, so our entire purpose on scene is to really uh, get a look at, in this case, uh, uh, the vehicles are in a different location, but to look at the scene uh, and to look at the vehicles and really get what becomes the perishable evidence, the things that go away or may uh, not be there over time. Roadway markings is a, a, an example of that. Uh, so that is what our investigators are doing now. Uh, over time, though, they'll look for uh, all sorts of factual information that they can get through email, phone call, or visits. Uh, it doesn't have to be here, but they may be back. Yes. Uh, so there are electronic uh, data recorders on some of the vehicles, uh, which uh, our investigators will look at. That has not occurred yet. Uh, we have that. We also have some camera footage that the State Highway Patrol uh, gathered both 
uh, which I think was external ca camera footage, including some camera footage from vehicles that were not involved in the collision, but may have picked up the collision. Uh, so we'll be looking at all of that. Isabel Hansen with ABC6 in Columbus. I know there was mention of a crash that happened prior to the crash involving the charter bus. What can you tell us about that and how it could have impacted the second crash with the charter bus? And uh, for those who might not be able to hear, the uh, question was on the, uh, the initial crash uh, and what we can t say about that crash and how it may have impacted uh, this, uh, this tragedy. That is clearly gonna be part of the investigation. Uh, that crash, we understand, occurred around 7.50-ish a.m. Uh, and then uh, this one occurred a about an hour later. Uh, so we'll look at uh, how uh, traffic was queued and we'll look at measures uh, for directing traffic. That is part of all, that's a standard practice of our investigation. We don't know anything right now and nothing we can draw from that. Uh, but it, it's part of our standard process and will be completed throughout the investigation. Lacey Crisp from 10TV News. Did anything stand out to you today in your initial look at all of the, um, from the scene to some of the vehicles? Uh, the question is, did anything stand out to me? Um, you know, from a, a professional standpoint at NTSB, uh, you know, we, we, we look at these things, uh, these tragedies, the vehicle, the road conditions, um, and, you know, it's part of our investigation, but we're also human. I'm a mom and I have a 15 year old daughter. And so when I look at the vehicles or I look at the roadway conditions, it, you can't, you, you, you think about, you can't not think about uh, the children that were involved, their families, the um, concern parents at home may have had. I mean, there was, there were, this was really tragic. This was a very serious crash. And uh, so it's, you can't separate those two. I mean, that, that's what makes us so passionate about our job. And you know, it's, it's why we want to determine how to prevent it from happening again and why we continue to fight to implement our safety recommendations that are issued. Great question, by the way. So the question is specific to I-70, but also a little bit broader on our investigation taking 12 to 18 months and whether we'll be able to uh, assist uh, the governor's office and others to make safety change. Yes, this is why we work uh, in this party system uh, so that what happens is uh, when we are gathering factual information from them, they are getting factual information from us. We are a very transparent agency and, and part of our uh, uh, entire uh, mission and vision uh, and our core values is transparency. And uh, so we provide information, we are, uh, what we're finding uh, to the other parties so that they can make immediate safety changes. They don't have to wait until the 12 to 18 months. And then if we see something more systemic beyond the state of Ohio that we really need to get word out on, we'll issue urgent safety recommendations and we will not wait. Um, so that helps. Yeah. I, I, I do wanna say, I do wanna add here, 43,000 people die on our roads annually. 43,000 people. We just had a board meeting uh, the other day on speeding and impairment. It, it, we have a public health crisis on our roads and we need all hands on deck here. We need to take action to save lives. 
We've issued several safety recommendations over the years. We've literally given entities a roadmap on how to save lives. But many of those recommendations aren't implemented. If they're not implemented, safety change doesn't occur. That's the key, implementing the recommendation. If I sound frustrated, I'm, I'm really passionate about that and safety. I will ask Kenny to uh, Good afternoon, Kenny Bradley, GSP. Uh, we have made contact with all the drivers and with the assistance of uh, the Ohio State Patrol, we have determined that everyone is licensed at this point. Thank you. Yes. Lacey from 10TV. Uh, you had mentioned uh, cameras on some of the cars. Any of those directly involved in the incident, did they have cameras that may give you an idea of exactly what led up to this crash? Yeah, and I, I, some vehicles did not have cameras, some did, so I want to make sure, do you want to address that? Or do you want to? Yeah, okay. I, I want to be very specific on which ones did or did. Yeah, that, that is obviously a, a very important to this this investigation is something that we were working to obtain is still very early, and we just haven't reached a conclusion as to that point yet. Okay, and then uh, we're also looking uh, for video from local businesses and other video from motor carriers that may have been outward facing and uh, caught uh, this particular collision. Yes. Yeah, our, our investigators will look into the fire. Uh, I will say, uh, and, and this is, I, I, I want to say this, we've seen fire from contents of vehicles, we've seen fire from fuel. Uh, I, I don't want to presume what it is today, but that's something that will be part of our investigation, is determine the source of the fire. But there are a lot of fires after significant crashes and because of the fuel. You have to remem remember it wasn't just the motor carrier and the motor coach. There was an SUV uh, in that was also the, there in between the two vehicles. Okay, so there were five vehicles that were involved. So how about I start with uh, the, the ones uh, farthest westbound. Uh, so not the uh, end of the queue. So we had a commercial motor vehicle. Uh, then there was the red SU SUV. Uh, then there was the motor coach. There was the, another SUV. That group was traveling with the motor coach. And then there was the com other commercial motor vehicle that had the most damage. Um, so five vehicles uh, had damage uh, in some way. So when you see pictures of that scene, between the bus and the truck, there's another vehicle in there somewhere. Correct. Oh. It's very tragic. I'm not sure on the exact distance that uh, the, the uh, first crash occurred, uh, but what I do know is it was uh, it was west of this tragic crash scene that we had, but I don't know the specific um, distance from this crash that we're discussing today. Was it a fender bender or was it a more of a full-blown accident with, with officers responding and squads and things like that? How big was it? 
I, I don't know. Uh, I don't have all the facts on that particular crash uh, at this time. Uh, I just know that it was west of the crash scene uh, that we're talking about today. I don't have those. I don't have that information at this time. And the truck driver, and the main truck that the defendant also claimed was speeding, did he just walk out of that truck in the moments after the accident before the explosion, or was he dragged out? I I don't have that information. Again, you know, the the crash is under investigation, and uh, you know what I will say is, you know, these crash investigations take time. Uh, and uh, it's incumbent uh, and imperative that uh, the Highway Patrol do everything that we can to make sure that any facts that we report uh, are factual and true. So I don't want to speculate uh, uh, about what might have happened or what didn't happen until we fully know uh, exactly what happened. Uh, part of that will be de determined through witness interviews. Uh, so we'll interview a a, a number of witnesses to try to piece together the timeline and who was where and what occurred, our survival factors and human performance and others, uh, investigators will look at that. They'll also look in the bus of who, who was seated where and uh, in the bus, uh, um, in the seating arrangement, uh, what injuries each person in that seat uh, uh, suffered. So it's a very detailed process, but uh, the per the, what the colonel said, we don't want to speculate because we want we want to be absolutely factual on that. Were there seat belts on board the motor coach? Uh, there were not seat belts on the motor coach except for the driver. Last question. Yeah. You had mentioned some of the Good Samaritans who stepped in to help. Have you heard any other people, like the junior high band director who ran onto the bus? We've heard reports that he helped pull some of the students out. Can you kind of talk about those people who helped this from becoming a worse tragedy? Yeah, I, we don't. I don't have specific details on what Good Samaritans did what at the time. We have reports of many uh, people stepping in to help. Uh, I mentioned the one uh, police department that was there just happened to be going by and heard it. Uh, and of course, the State Highway Patrol was there pretty quickly. Uh, there was a huge response here. Uh, so uh, I just have to say uh, thank you to those Good Samaritans and all the responders. Thank you very much. Uh, I will say for updates, uh, please monitor NTSB.gov and also our social media accounts. Thank you.